Welcome to the Write Better Fiction podcast, the show that helps you, well, write better fiction. I'm Shane Miller, urban fantasy author, writing coach, and story geek, and each week I'll be talking to industry experts about the writing craft, publishing, and the business of being an author. Enjoy the show. Hello, fictioneers, and welcome to episode three of the Write Better Fiction podcast. Today, I'm chatting to my buddy, author, podcaster, and book formatter, Julia Scott, all about how to format books, because she's working on a book called The Book Formatting Formula, which we're all eagerly waiting for. You'll pick up a ton of tips about how to format books well, so stay tuned for that. But first, it's time for question of the week. So I'm going to fess up, because I was in Seville um, last week for 20 books to 50k, I didn't post as much as I probably should have, so I forgot to advertise last week's episode. We don't have any answers to last week's question. Uh, If we do get answers this week when I push the episode out properly, I'll incorporate them into next week's show. But this week's question is, what skill do you wish you had that you haven't? And that is in light of my conversation with Julia this week. I wish I knew how to format great looking books and didn't have to rely on software to do it for me. But hey ho. Okay, it's time for my update from the writing chair. Like I said, I just got back from Spain and 20 books to 50k was absolutely incredible. Um, I had the best time, probably the best thing I've ever done professionally. It was the first time I've been to an in-person writing conference. And the first time I've got to meet some people that I know only through online things, that was really cool. So seeing people in person that you've only ever seen through a screen is quite funny. Uh, Yeah, but I had the best time. I would highly recommend going to conferences if you can, because the networking opportunities that you will have will far surpass anything you can do online. And literally straight after I've recorded this, my suitcase is over in that corner. I'm off to London for London Book Fair. Uh, So if you're going, I will see you there as well, hopefully. If you want early access to episodes and exclusive access to the Fictioneer community on Discord, where you can participate in things like question of the week and weekly accountability challenges, you can support the Write Better Fiction podcast for just $5 a month. Support the show over at patreon.com forward slash write better fiction. And when I reach 50 patrons, I'm going to start recording a monthly Q&A for patrons only. Okay, that's about it from me. So let's get into the interview with Julia. Hello, and welcome to the Write Better Fiction podcast. Today, I'm joined by Julia Scott. Julia Scott is a British author whose goal is to take you out of regular life and teleport you to new worlds and alternative futures through her writing. The Mirror Souls trilogy, which is a YA science fantasy, is her debut series. And like many sci-fi and fantasy books, it started off as a dream. In her other life, Julia lives in Essex, England, and home educates her two children. She spends the rest of her time writing, helping authors with formatting, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, The book formatting formula will be out soon, and she also runs Even Star Books. She sings, she games, she digs, and plants stuff in the garden without really knowing what she's doing. Hi, Julia. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. You're so welcome. So we'll dive right into the questions. Tell us a bit about you and your writing and formatting journey. <laughs> yeah, I get a writing and formatting journey, <laughs> yes. not just one. No. Um, yeah, they kind of happened at the same time, to be honest. Okay. I started writing in 2018 because I had a dream, which sounds so <laughs> cliche. But this is literally what happened. And I texted my friend and I said, oh, my God, I just had this dream. It was amazing. Um I feel like it could be a book or a movie and she's like yeah write it so I did um and that was for NaNoWriMo 2018 um and I kind of just threw myself at it really and got it done um yeah not really wanting to be a writer or anything and just thinking yeah I'm gonna write a book why not (laughs) that's not what we usually hear but Uh, we usually hear like I was born with a pen in my hand and all that stuff no (laughs) no I've never, ever wanted to write a book until that moment. And even then, I'm not sure I actually wanted to write it, (laughs) but I did. Um, Yeah, and then I kind of just fell into the publishing world because I jumped onto Instagram for some, you know, moral support and realised how many people are out there and how cool they are. Um, Yeah, so I just kept writing, really, and, you know, just got 
pulled along with everyone else somehow. And then when it comes to formatting, um, I decided to format my book myself, The Mirror Souls, because it saved money. <laughs> and <laughs> I thought, yeah, I can do that. Cause like I've made documents look pretty before I can do that. Um, and then I started doing it. And I was like, Ooh, this is, um, <laughs> this is different. Um, yeah. But yeah, people were impressed with how my book looked. I'm not bragging. It's literally what they said. And um, <laughs> yeah, some I had some author friends say, can you help me with mine? And I'm like, yeah, okay. So I helped a few people out. And then I'm like, yeah, this could make a good side hustle. I might make some money out of this. And then that side hustle got a bit bigger and a bit bigger again. So yeah, that's, that's how it all happened. Nice. And I have seen some of your formatted books. They are very beautiful indeed so that's not you bragging that is just a true fact thank you uh so for newer authors listening to the show what is formatting and what does a book formatter actually do yeah so book formatting is the design process that transforms your manuscript into a professional book um so i get people's books ready for both print and ebook um but what i do is a little more extensive than that because i don't just get them ready i make them look pretty I prettify the pages um so yeah it's just adding design elements to a book interior to make it more interesting more dynamic because I think the book cover shouldn't be the only interesting thing about the book when it comes to design um yeah get, getting it ready to go out into the world yeah I agree and there is that really heavy emphasis on the book cover and nobody really discusses um the formatting aspect. it does it does upset me when there's a cover reveal on instagram or social media and there's no <laughs> formatting, formatting reveal. reveal. <laughs> some people do they've started to but like i do think that i mean the inside of the book is the bit you're looking at the most well if, if you actually read and don't just buy books to put on a shelf <laughs> which some people obviously do some people which is valid <laughs> yeah <it> completely <laughs> completely valid nice yeah. Great. So when we get into the actual book production process, why is formatting so important? I mean, you could easily throw a Word document at Amazon KDP and you'd end up with a book. But formatting has one key element that's really, really, really important, and that's readability. So you want to give your customer, the reader, an enjoyable experience um, where they're not pulled out of the story. So you'd be surprised how much bad formatting can really distract a reader and pull them out of your story, which is literally the opposite of what you want to do. Um, and the other aspect for me is making sure your book doesn't stand out for all the wrong reasons. So formatting should be about making your book look as good as, if not better than, traditionally published books so that, you know, we can prove that indie authors can be just as awesome. Yeah, and we can obviously and we are we we totally are yeah cool so you spoke there about kind of the book standing out for the wrong reasons and all that stuff so what are the most common formatting mistakes you see when you're reading because I know you read a lot and I've heard you talk about it angers you when the book is kind of badly formatted I'm not gonna lie I have <laughs> ditched reading books because of the formatting right <laughs> it's just too stressful for me. <laughs> Which is sad because I might be missing out on a really great story, but I just I physically cannot read it when it looks like that. Um, and, I, you know, I don't think that's just because I'm a formatter. I think that there are other readers out there who would be just as distracted by it. So. One of the common mistakes I see is over designing. Um, and by that, I mean, using too many different fonts, too many different graphics and just going overboard, basically, because they want to make something impressive and show off, but you can do too much and simple can be best sometimes. Um, the design elements in books need to be cohesive and just make sense together. Another mistake I see is people not justifying their text, <laughs> um, which means it lines up on the left and the right. So they often justify it on the left. <laughs> so down the right, you've got a jaggedy line it's not a line but the text doesn't end all in the same place and it looks really messy uh that was a very common mistake and a third one is when people leave gaps between paragraphs in fiction books you'll see it in non-fiction books and that's okay I'll let you off for that one but with <laughs> fiction books i i just i literally can't read a book like that 
um, because it makes the reader pause when you have a break in a paragraph like that. It makes it makes you pause in your brain. And it's it's too many pauses when you're trying to read a block of text like that. So it's, yeah. it stops the flow. Yeah, definitely. I've read some fiction with unintentional paragraph breaks and you're trying to work out whether it's a new scene or whether it's just a mistake and you don't really know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the thing. It's about readability. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And something else you talk about like a lot, I mean a lot, is um, font choice when you format. So why is making the right choices in regard to font kind of chapter headings, main body of your text, all that stuff. Why is it so important and why should we be paying attention to that? Because fonts are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I do love fonts, it's true. It's a bit of a, a nerdy thing, really. I can't help myself. Um, but for the body text, again, it's about readability. So the size and the spacing are really important for the reading experience um, to not be distracting. But also the type of font you use is important. So in print books, the body text should be in serif font. So a serif font is where you have the little d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-
so it, it wouldn't have the sense. same it wouldn't have the same impact and and that's how i've designed it to have a page on the left and a page on the right just with examples of if you make all these mistakes this is how it's going to look if you do what i'm telling you to do this is how it looks so yeah i hope yeah. it helps people i think it will and i think there's a real need for it in the space because there's not you know there's books on pretty much everything else but i can't say that i found some any decent books on format yeah i mean all the information is out there on the internet you can just search for it but it's scattered it takes time though. it takes time and it's scattered and i just wanted <laughs> yeah. it to be in one place um yeah the, the trouble is that formatting is done in slightly different ways so i have put a disclaimer at the front saying you know this is how i do it doesn't yeah. mean it's always the correct way <laughs> <laughs> or you know there are other ways to do things but yeah um yeah. but i do i really do help it hope it helps people yeah i definitely think it will um something else you explained bleed to me the other day and i always set bleed settings on my books especially mm -hmm. with if they've got images and like fancy chapter headers and stuff but i didn't really know what bleed was i was just doing it because i thought i probably need this so can you talk <laughs> a little bit about um bleed when it when it becomes necessary to use bleed and apply the right bleed settings to your book yep so Bleed refers to images that extend beyond the edge of the printed page. Um, so it's literally just if you want images in your book that go right up to the edge of the page. So yeah, if you have images in your book on a chapter header, if it doesn't go past the edge of the page, you don't need bleed. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Basically, you just need to, if you want the images to go over the edge of the page, you need to make the page bigger than the final book will be. And then um, it means when it comes to be printed, the edges are trimmed and then that image goes to the edge of the page. That's that's literally it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So I guess it doesn't apply for ornamental breaks and stuff because they don't go to the edge of the page usually. Um, but it would apply if you had, say, a, a half page image as part of your chapter heading. Like yeah. In but it only if only if it absolutely has to go over the edge yeah. of the page. Otherwise, you know, you just have to keep it within a safe boundary and then it's fine. Right. And you don't need the bleed settings. I know it's a little bit confusing, but again, this is why I've made templates um, to go along with the book formatting formula, because then you can just pick the one that you need and it will work for you. Hopefully. I didn't know you've made templates too. That's the yes. Internet. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So can you tell us about a book you've read that's had really great formatting and what made it stand out in the right ways? And Am not one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to say any of the ones I've formatted? Aww. No, because of course they're going to be good. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, okay. It's not a book I've read, but I bought it and I totally plan on reading it. Mm -hmm. But I have flicked through it and gone oh it's so pretty and it's um the paperback version of law by alexander bracken as in law based on the greek gods oh, yeah. stuff I have that to read. um you have this one mm. um what what do i like about it the the chapter um titles are the same font as the cover which always makes me happy it it's really important to bring in aspects from the cover to the inside of the book that makes it feel cohesive and like it's it just feels right that way um if you can't get the same font or you don't know the font that was used on your cover you could try and find something similar um or something that you know just works well with it um what else uh the pages are just really clear that the italics are really easy to read <laughs> and it's all this stuff that sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud but it does make a difference like, I think it's the Garamond font. Their italics are just so hard to read. Hard to read. That mm. if, it's in, if it's in a big block, it's like, it just, yeah, it's very distracting. Um, and then, yeah, so everything's kept really simple, but then there are really cool parts of the book. Um, they have uh, page, uh, sorry, part dividers, which, which look like this, with a black marble oh, page nice. on that side, and then obviously the top of a column, I like that. And then at the back, they also have these um, columns at the side, which is a cast of characters. And it just makes it stand out from the rest of the book. And of course, there's a map. Oh, yeah. There has and to everyone be a map. loves a map. And it's yeah. beautifully designed. That and is nice. 
one thing to remember about maps if you're either making one yourself or getting someone to make one for you is if you plan on having it spanning two pages make sure there's nothing important down the very center because it will disappear into the binding and yes. you won't be able to read it but this designer has accounted for that so very well designed book nice i like it so this is the write better fiction podcast and i know we've been chatting about formatting but you do write fiction as well so julia scott why do you write fiction oh, i just fell into it really <laughs> <laughs> that's the best answer i'm ever gonna have <laughs> um yeah no when people say oh you know i have to get the words out i literally don't feel like that i could stop writing any day and survive um but I've always been a creative person I love I especially love music and singing um and the thing I love about music is the storytelling aspect of it and ultimately the emotion it conveys and the emotion it evokes in people um and that's what I love to do is to get people to feel something um and I think that's why we turn to art in general alongside being entertained but all kinds of art is we're want to feel something and so that's what I hope to manage to do in my writing is help people to feel something but I love to do it in singing as well yeah yeah and they're obviously very similar songwriting techniques and and poetry techniques and all those great things you can do with songwriting too so yeah that's very cool I do have an extra question that I didn't prep you for oh no yes (laughs) um when are you starting Christmas Cats in Space. (laughs) (laughs) I have to finish the book formatting formula first. I think it's a little bit more important, but Mm. I'm going to put a poll out on my social media and see if people actually would read it. And if they would, would, if they would, I'll write it, I promise. That's awesome because I've already designed you a cover. I know, it's stunning. Yeah, thanks. (laughs) And I'll get it done in time for Christmas. Perfect. It won't be so, long. It won't be a long book. No, I'd say novella for sure. Uh, but yeah, so you can, by the time this episode airs, you'll be able to get the book formatting formula and you have Christmas Cats in Space to look forward to <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is fantastic. So just to round up, can you tell everyone where they can find out more about you and everything you do? Yep, of course. Um, I currently have three websites up and running, which is a bit nuts. Um, for my books, it's juliascottwrites.com. For my formatting, it's evenstarbooks.com. And for the book and online course, it's the bookformattingformula.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram at juliascottwrites and at the book formatting formula. Thanks for being on the show, Julia. That was great. Yeah, thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Julia and picked up a ton of actionable tips on how to format books. Join me next week when I'll be chatting to Daniel Wilcox from Activated Authors all about the author mindset. Have a great writing week. Thanks for listening to the Write Better Fiction podcast. Remember to hit subscribe on your favourite podcatcher and leave a review and we'll chat again next time.